Hello everyone, Jeff here. So this is my 3.5 gallon tank. I guess I call this my shrimp tank. And that's because I have neocaridina shrimp in here. Mostly red cherry shrimp. Um, I'd say there's maybe 20 shrimp in here. Um, Maybe four are blue and the rest are red, like these right here. Let's see if I can find a blue one. I did see one crawling over here. Don't see it now. I did see, yeah, there's one right there. Let's. Right in between the rocks right there, there's a blue dude. So all of these shrimp, um, well, I think all that I have now were ones that were born in this tank and that have now grown to near adulthood. There's a pygmy cory. Um, I originally or I started with, I bought eight adults, four and then four more, five red, two blue, and one black, and probably half of them just disappeared, you know, I gotta assume they died and then their carcasses got eaten, but maybe, I don't know, the other half, four or so, I did find their dead bodies. So, you know, this is my first time having shrimp, so I don't really know what their, I don't even, I don't know what their lifespans are like, if they just died from average age length of, from old age, or if there was any other reason. There's a pigment quarry again. And I don't know how long it'll take for the next generation to have babies. I haven't seen any new shrimplet from the shrimplets. But, you know, one of my, my plan is to, you know, have them, you know, get shrimp going in this tank before I spread them out into my other tanks. I mean, ultimately I'd like to have them in all my other community tanks. But before doing so, I want to see a next generation shrimplets again before I move some to my other tanks. But in here I also have, you know, saw the pygmy cory already, but there's four pygmy cories in here, four white clouds, and a pair of platies. Well, anyway, the reason why I'm showing this tank today is because I'm going to see how the shrimp like rapashi. This is rapashi right here. This is what I mixed up. Rapashi Superfoods Community Plus. If you don't already know, Rapashi is a powdered premix that you, you know, it's a powder, you mix it with boiling water and then let it cool and it becomes this like solid gel type stuff. And you know, I've heard that this is really good in fish like it. There's a blue one right there. Yeah, so I heard good things about it and I've been meaning to try it and I just got some recently and I've already fed my 30 gallon community tank and my 10 gallon mud guppy tank. So this will be the first time 
feeding this tank. So, as the cool kids say, without further ado, let's drop some of this in here. So there's a chunk there. I don't expect them to find it. <clears throat> I'd like to be all over it as quick as you know the fish in my other tanks. I should actually just do smaller bits. Well, let's drop this in here too. Alright, so there's some bits there. be a while before they notice it and realize it's food. Probably if I stepped away and came back an hour later I might find a bunch of shrimp and snails on top of it. But these white clouds and platys are oblivious. I should mention that I did just do a Levamisol treatment on this tank. Um, I did notice this, the female platy had a red camelanus worm sticking out of her butt, or at least that's what I believe it to have been. So I did, I treated this tank with Levamisol and I just did the second treatment actually in doing so I covered the entire tank in darkness so I did that and then yesterday you know for 24 hours because Levamisol is affected by light so it needs to be in the dark and so I did that yesterday and then I did a water change on the tank and I recently added this the Oka stone, Oka stone or dragon stone, right here in the back. That took that was in my ten gallon mud cuppy tank for for a while. And there in the back, I added a catapa leaf. No bites yet. Let's see when the the corridors get wind of it. I expect they them the pygmy corridors to to enjoy it. Well, it's a bit of a disappointment. I'm sure they'll like it once they become aware of it, but no reaction. That's a shame. So, this platy, this female platy, should be dropping fry pretty soon. She has had fry three times in this tank, and of those three times, I've had zero survivors. She first had fry two days after I got her and put her in this tank, and none of those, maybe one of the first group of fry lasted a month and then it disappeared and then 35 days later she had another batch of babies and one of those lasted up until 
the night before the last time I saw her was the night when I did the last Levamisol treatment and you know before I covered it covered the, covered the tank for 24 hours and when I when I came back 24 hours later to uncover it and turn the light on I haven't seen it since it wasn't really looking too good leading up to that time either there's a decent look at that shrimp right there you know these are most of these are lower grade cherry shrimp like the first batch of four that I got were just lower grade cherry shrimp like you can kind of see this one right here is a bit darker the second group of shrimp when I got I got a dark red one and the two blues and the black so that could be the offspring of one of those that red one because when I got that it was buried as the cool kids say but yeah so the second batch of fry that she had one lasted almost you know maybe about two months I would have thought it would have grown bigger than it was after two months so two days after I got her she had a first batch of fry then 35 days later she had a second batch of fry and after that 28 days later she had her third batch of fry and I saw maybe eight counted eight of those and none of those survived past I don't think any of those lasted past a week so I don't know if that had anything to do with them being unhealthy or what if she her having Camelanus worms had anything to do with that perhaps um, but now that I've done two levamisole treatments and she should be clear of Camelanus worms let's see when she has her next batch how well they do maybe I'll have survivors from that batch this next batch which could be as soon as you know, maybe tomorrow because after like the third batch came 28 days after the second batch and tomorrow will make 28 days after that one so maybe they'll be fry as soon as tomorrow okay here we go there's a shrimp on the rapashi it's actually in focus okay but it's just blurry right here with the because it's algae Let's see the other chunks. No one's made it their way to those. And look at that right there the top you see those white it's like eggs on the anacarous leaf right there there's some more closer but it's kind of in that glare area but those would be bladder snail eggs right I believe they are that's at least what I think they look like but yeah, I'm sure that's what those are. Oh, there's a nice blue one right there on the on the jungle bell leaf.
So when will these dudes, or, you know, I don't know if they're, I don't know how to tell male and female really, but when are they going to have more babies? And looking at this one, like I've heard of shrimp, shrimp being described as having a saddle. Is that a saddle on this one? Like how it's like a dark spot up top and then you know, once they're buried, it's like moves to their belly? Or is that just something else? <laughs> I don't even know. Like is that its brain? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's pretty... I can tell when they're, you know, buried. When I bought them, it was that was pretty obvious, but the saddle part, I don't really know. And why are you more interested in picking whatever off the plants and ignoring the rapache. And why have the corridor is not found it yet? What's going on? Why are you guys so inactive? Let me just put some flake food in here just to see if they'll at least respond to that. I don't know if they're affected from the, as I mentioned, they just had a levamisole treatment, so let's put some flake food. You guys gonna react to that? What is up with these fish? Why are they so unresponsive right now? Let's tank it. See how it's kind of blurry right here? There's like a a round section. This is like a, a six-sided tank. So there's a, a round, rounded edge right here to the side and then another rounded edge right there where it kind of distorts the view. Well, the good thing about Rapashi is that it doesn't, like, spoil. And it maintains its shape, and it can, you know, if it takes them a while to acknowledge it and get used to it and decide they want to eat it, it'll stay there for them. It doesn't, like spoil like other foods do. It'll maintain that its form. There is a bladder snail right there in the front. Okay, are they even eat, eating any of the flake food? Okay, there was a bite of the flake food. The male platy. I 
Oh, the female getting some food. Is White Cloud's gonna do anything? Alright, well. Still have that one shrimp on the Rapashi. And nothing else. <clears throat> well, based on that, Rapashi is not a hit with these guys. Yeah, this was my other. This is the third tank that I've tried feeding it to. And the first two, th my 30 gallon live bear community tank, as I mentioned, that was the first one I fed it to, and they went nuts over it. And my 10 gallon mutt guppy tank, those fish. Uh, liked it too but these guys don't well I guess they don't acknowledge it as food anyway so maybe I'll just leave it like that and maybe later I'll find them going at it alright well that was kinda of disappointing but We'll end it on that. And I'm Jeff, and I enjoy fishies, and I enjoy kitties. Thanks for watching.